your your sound sounds good and everything too so okay perfect make sure it's live here one second perfect okay hello everyone welcome to another author hangout at the book refuge today i am joined by my bestie who's on this side tiff from tiff talks pages say hello my love hi hi <laughs> and we are joined by the illustrious lily main who's joining us from the uk today to dish all about her wonderful monsters and fey with us so say hello lily hi hi everyone <laughs> yeah so lily needs to keep a little bit of mystery about her so this is just going to be a voice interview but that's okay you still have me and tiff to look at and our brightly colored bookshelf <laughs> will entertain you that way so <laughs> well now, i'm sitting on my bed in my pajamas so you probably wouldn't want to see me right now anyway <laughs> I love we it. would, but um, <laughs> I'm glad that you're comfortable. Yes. <laughs> I mean, again, Stacey Rude, right? Reed joined me in like a moo moo. It was delightful. She was literally <laughs> wearing a moo moo with like cats on it or something. It was great. I was like, well, I did say it was a casual hangout. So there was no. <laughs> But anyway, well, we'll dive right in. Oh, everyone's saying hello first. It's good. We just want all the deets from Lily. Well, yeah. we will get there, Daniela. We will get there. As I do, I have some questions I like to ask every author about kind of their romance journey. And then you guys, I'll let you know when you can start throwing in your questions. I have a few questions that were sent ahead of time, but we're just going to take a casual jaunt as we usually like to do. So the first question I like to ask everyone is, what is your romance reading journey? Like, when did you start reading romance and what kinds and just kind of how that's been? Um, I think when I was a teenager, I was really into, like, fae, fairy romance, like Holly Black, read everything, love her book so much. And then as I got older, I think it was Cresley Cole, the Immortals After Dark series, yeah, that really got me into like paranormal romance and vampires and werewolves and everything. I still love that series and I'll go back and read my favourites a lot. Same, um, speaking to me, that's my crack is her vampires and her likes are just... She's I feel like, yeah, she's definitely one of the gateway authors, isn't she, into like paranormal monsters that kind of stuff for sure yeah definitely fun. Well, that's cool so have you mostly stayed in like the paranormal and like fey realm then in, in your own reading or is there you know where where have you kind of gone through your journey is that really kind of what you've stayed with no i read all kinds um i probably do more heavily read paranormal romance because I just find it more interesting but I do love contemporary like Cora Rose's series mm. I love and they're just pure contemporary romance um I love Kira Andrews everything she writes as well and she writes big mix I love Kira she writes everywhere I love her yes. <laughs> she I have yeah she can't write a bad book like not that I'm saying lots of people can <laughs> but I just everything she writes I I just love. Um so yeah, I, I just read a really big mix. Not just MM as well, a lot of MF as well and just a mix of everything really. Yeah. Well, that's one of the cool things about Carrie Anders, I feel like, is that really her only staple is that she usually is always writing MM, but then it'll be a barbarian or pirates or like uh stranded on an island or just contemporary, like she'll or a bodyguard, like she'll just write all over the place, which I think is really, really fun with her. Yeah, she keeps kidnapped by different. the pirate though is probably it's one of my yeah. favorite books. Yeah. Really? That's the one. That's really? our favorite one. You are speaking our language. Thank you. Yeah, that's I a have favorite. that one. <laughs> I consistently reread that. Okay. Yeah, same. Yes, Hawk and Nathaniel are delicious. <laughs> I can write like a like a grumpy ball busting stern hero just melting like goo so well like yeah yeah 
<laughs> Which that kind of sounds like you are writing as well, because you have these sweet and swoony romances with these very like harsh backdrops that I love so much. So I see it. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I love. I just like writing like which you can probably guess characters that everyone else apart from their person thinks is terrifying but they're just yeah a complete simp for their person <laughs> uh yeah you've definitely pushed us to some interesting places recently so <laughs> I wish I still had well I probably do if I went back far enough but some of the dms between me and tiff while I was reading Sarah were pretty interesting <laughs> I know in the artwork, I was, I was like, like, I was like, girl, I don't know, I don't know if I'm a, if I can make this one work. I don't know. <laughs> it was the hand, Lily. The it hand. I'm like, she is going there. We're really monster. Well, in the eyes, the, <laughs> I have an issue with eyes, so I was like, I can't imagine them all eyes. <laughs> and the tongue. Oh, we will get to that. I mean, <laughs> anyway, full use of that. Anyway. <laughs> Anyway, oh my gosh. Well, we kind of jumped to this one too, but like, what's the, what is like you're currently reading romance right now? Well, the two that I've been reading are two that aren't out yet. I don't know if I, I'm reading C. Rochelle's the next in her, the one after Not All Himbos, because she's graciously yeah. allowed me to, and <laughs> Cora Rose's next one as well. I've been reading both of those. <laughs> I love not all himbos wear capes. I'm not gonna start. Sorry. <laughs> Are you loving it? Can you tell us that? It, it is really, really, really good. Yeah, it's so good. Wolfie <sighs> is perfect. Yeah, and so is his person as well. Oh my gosh! Well, that's look. See, Courtney, I love Sarah. I I love him. I just in the beginning, I saw some fan art that was too much. Too much for me. I was like, okay, I can't. I have to pretend I didn't see that and just picture him how like I want to picture him. That's what I have to do. Yeah, just picture him with two eyes. I I did honestly it was the eyes. I can't get on board with a lot, but I was like, I can't. There's too many eyes. <laughs> I, then I found some fan art and I sent it to Tiff and I was like, look, this person did a fan art and I can I can roll with this one. <laughs> I just love that. Like you inspired people to like, we're going to throw our spin on it. I loved it. Yep. As you're reading, speaking of C. Rochelle, I do have a question. What is it like to build friendships with other authors that are kind of writing within your like same domain? Because I see you guys supporting each other, especially like when, you know, Death's Bloom came out and writing together. Like what's that process been like? Have you made new friendships? Yeah, definitely. But I, I mean, which Corinne will be able to um, definitely back me up on. I'm terrible at reaching out to people because, you know, imposter syndrome. I'm just like, no one wants to talk to me. <laughs> and <laughs> Corinne, so she she was the one who reached out first. And now, yeah, we're really good friends. And Cor Rose as well. Um, we We talk a lot and it's really nice to have support because it's kind of a it can be quite a lonely thing to do because you're kind of doing it all you know at home by yourself I have my husband who's a massive support as well but there's there's stuff you just can't kind of you don't know about until you can ask someone else who's already been through it and I'm not the type to ask <laughs> um unless I know someone's happy to help me kind of thing. Like I'm just a very awkward person, but yeah, so I'm, I'm super grateful for the authors that have reached out to me who I talk to a lot now. Yeah. Love that. Love that. All right. Continuing. Oh, come on computer. Continuing through kind of like your journey with this. So what inspired you to finally sit down and get a story out and, and complete it and go with it was Soul Eater, the first one, or just the first one you published? Is that the first one? I'm. Just yeah, <laughs> um, yeah, that was the the first one I published, and it's definitely not. I've got so many things on my laptop that are like half written that right. I just start and then get a new idea and move on. But during the pandemic, because obviously everyone had more time at home not doing much so I just thought I'm gonna try and finish one book just for myself to see if I can write a whole book 
and then I did it. So then I thought, I mean, I can self-publish it. I might as well as like a personal achievement. Um, did not think like I just like hit publish and that was it. I didn't do anything else. So I, I really did not expect <laughs> many people, if anyone to, to read it. So yeah, it, it was intense, but it's, yeah, it's amazing. It's just nice knowing that it's lovely knowing that other people enjoy them so much and enjoy the characters. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Soul, Soul Eater was a recommendation to me. I have a, I have a book rec form. So, you know, cause there's, mil there's millions of books out there. We know how it is. And someone put that, someone put that in my rec form and I was like, Soul Eater. And then I was looking what it was about and I was like, okay, but I have this rule when I try one of those books that I give it 50 pages. I'm like, I don't care what the cover looks like or what the explanation is. Like I give it 50 pages mm -hmm. and I got into it and I could not put it down. I was like, what is this? It's like this is an apocalypse. It's kind of, it's kind of like a survival it. Like I don't, I couldn't pin it into anything, but I was just like, wow, I'm so glad someone recommended this to me. Cause it's, I mean, it's not, it wasn't in my like normal Mm -hmm. wheelhouse a book I would try it I was like I'm in absolutely she was so excited she dm'd me because I had read it in October and I didn't know that the second one was out I didn't look back into it and like her excitement about no. Lynn <laughs> Danny, I was like okay we're gonna we're we're running through this so yeah. I read Soul Eater and since I ran through the entire series along with her because she was just like so yes yeah. I was like, oh my God. Well, I mean, I knew Eden was next and I was like, well, he's going to be amazing. I know. <laughs> I definitely can write about that. Oh, but I love how you just like, oh, yes. Oh, yeah. Ah, hi. I definitely cornered you. Oh, cute. Oh, you do collect author friends like Pokemon. <laughs> I love that's that. Oh, that's so fun. Well, anyway, well, that is awesome. But I think that's also kind of like, w like where the where did the inspiration for like monster romance come from? I think is the other part of that is like, so you have the story. Where did the wind come from? <laughs> where did I don't like? I don't know. I I wanted to write a romance between like this big terrifying creature that everyone's terrified of and then this kind of naive <laughs> like cute guy and then I can't I honestly I I wrote the first couple of scenes for it so long ago and they just sat there that I I have no idea what inspired me to to sit down and just write them the the first scenes I wrote were when Danny takes his helmet off in the base yeah, in front yeah. of Wynn, yeah, and their first sex scene. They were the <laughs> they were the first two scenes I wrote for it. Um, but I, yeah, I, I think I, I don't know what where Win came from. I think because I like I, I personally like when faces are hidden as well. So that was a big part of it that he's kind of this mysterious. No one knows what he looks like, and then I really liked the thought of him. I mean kind of technically not being very attractive I guess like I know he is but do you know what? like in human yeah. standards conventionally yeah. he's not but that doesn't matter and then obviously his human guy has to be like the most beautiful guy <laughs> everyone who meets him has seen <laughs> yeah oh Danny baby Danny Danny <laughs> I love it. I love that he's masked because I'm like, ah, oh, it it holds space for like their genuine like sexual tension and mm -hmm. their attraction isn't physical, which I love because they meet each other at just a time where like they meet each other's needs. And so I love that when is masked for so long because it like yeah. gets down to the bare bones of like their connection and it's affirming for me. You know, I was like, yay, the just non conventional beauty getting a win. Okay. <laughs> I love it. I love it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, there are also, though, definitely some interesting points in the series of 
some men being pretty brave to put their to put their penises in some places that are scary. Okay, like I don't know another way to word it. I don't know another way to word it. But you don't know what's in there in some of these. Can we <laughs> talk about anatomy? What's inspired the monstrous like, anatomy? Some of these, I'm like, I know this is going to be pleasurable for everyone. I know it's going to be good. But I don't know what's in there. <laughs> what are you putting your dick right now? <laughs> <laughs> monster anatomy is always it's so fun it's so fun <laughs> how do you plot that in your head like how are you <laughs> just, i need to know these things get the, just answers, Tiff. get the answers yeah i don't i mean i feel like i don't know <laughs> sarah's is, is definitely the the weirdest so far i think yeah but i like that I like I like how kind of I guess you could say it's a little horrifying, but yeah, that's why it works so well with Lilac because Lilac just wouldn't care about those things. Whereas you could easily find someone who that would be a complete turn off. I think it's I just like it it adds another element of them being accepted just as they are, kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah, but, I, mean, I mean, no, go ahead. Go on. Sorry. I was gonna say, I don't, well, I no, don't know, I, I don't have like a, a great answer for where the anatomy is inspired from. It's just kind of me thinking, what would be what would be new and interesting <laughs> to add to junk? Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just thought the thought of like, what is a cool sex toy? that I could make someone's genitals be. <laughs> That's where I look at some of it. Well, because who was it? It was on, I think it was on like weird romance podcasts or one uh, or bonkers romance podcast. They literally just called it wins like hot pocket or something. <laughs> it's, like, it's like, and I was like, now I can't think of it as anything else. <laughs> That was not, that was not, um, oh my gosh, that is hilarious. The one, the one, the one. <laughs> I mean, all hail the pocket. There we go. That's what it is. It is a special, special pocket. Okay. <laughs> oh my gosh. I was just cooling down, you guys. And then we got to start talking about anatomy and I was like, <laughs> But anyway, where I was going to go before we were talking about anatomy was that was one of the th the she was uh, blah, blah, blah. Lily, you were saying them being accepted as they are. That's where I'm going from this thought. Uh, I that was what was so powerful about Sarah for me while I was talking with Tiffany were reading this is I was like, there is so much that has to be dived into with this before I'm going to feel OK with there being anything intimate between these two just because we don't know Seraph's state of mind or what's been happening to him mm -hmm. or how he's been fucked with or any of that. And there were parts of it where I was like, I don't know how this can work. Like I know that it will because we're promised that it will, but I don't know how I'll be okay with this until you know, until they can communicate or until yeah. there's more going on. And I just think you did that very beautifully. And it made me believe that there was fully consent by everybody and there was fully a connection between them. And then it doesn't really matter whether anyone else is getting it or not, because I believed it between the two of them. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, that, that was, yeah, when I was writing it, it was super important because I feel like uh, that might it might be a bit more of a slower burn because of yes. that because it was so important for me to establish that Seraph you know can consent yeah. and is can think clearly enough to understand what's going on and that he's you know mentally mature enough as well right to do those kinds of things with another person um yeah. so yeah that was something I was like nervous about making sure that definitely came across before anything happened between them. Yeah. 
It did. I needed to well, be he gets a, he gets a little grabby too. So it's can he accept consent as well? <laughs> it's, it's both I both. like it because I'm like I always like when like, a little bit grabby there. <laughs> you know, others can make like consent <laughs> sexy, but like you made consent um like a it's it was vulnerable and it was healing, which I really loved. So like yeah. when he starts warming up to it, it was like, okay, he's healing, he's recuperating, like and the reveal on that. That yeah. rocked me mm. and Jen. We were like, wow. mm-hmm. so I think that yep. you yep. And then I was crying and I was like, I'm okay yeah. with everything. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was an that was a that was an emotional one. That was an emotional one. Well, my, my plan was to have law be kind of a like a bit of a relief after Seraph because Seraph is kind of heavy em- emotionally. Yeah. And I, yeah. I think I failed. <laughs> yeah. In the end. Well, the first half, the first half definitely was. <laughs> I won't pretend that I wasn't a little mad, but they're your characters and you tell the story you need to tell. You tell the story you need to tell. But I was like, Tiffany, I'm not okay with this. I'm not okay with this. I'm not okay with this. <laughs> and plus it's like, I you know. Lore, Lore's journey just as yeah. a ruler that weighed on me heavily. So I was like, yeah. this is just yeah. Because well, and we liked life. we liked that um uh that the human was the monster. The monster. Yeah. It's the one book. Oh, first of all, let me just get this out here. <laughs> I loved Lore as being, you know, the latest book because it's the one book where I get to see the origin place of a lot of my favorite characters. It's fully fleshed out. It felt like the right time and like an integral part in the whole economy of the world. And I love that Jugs is the monster. I just thought that was so creative. Like, <laughs> the human is the monster. I just loved that so much. And it's also comedic and it was like when Jen, she had DM'd me and she was like, it's just their romance is just ooey gooey and it's sweet. Yeah. And I'm like that's that's yeah. I love how you do that. I love how yeah. you do that. Like we're in a survival end of days. I mean, high stakes, <laughs> everyone's life is in danger, like wars are breaking out, and we have these ooey gooey soft romances when they should hate each other, fear each other, you know? Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, it's also it's not like it was completely out of nowhere because I was like there's a reason why this is set in the time that it's set. So I knew there was a hammer coming for my face. So there was also that. There was also that. So yes. I've known better. Jugs in his hot shorts. Yeah, I was yeah. like, Jugs was perfect. They're great. They're I know great. how his brother's like, of course he's falling. You're teaching him all these human sexual things and bringing him <laughs> Yeah. I love it. I'm just reading, I'm sharing all these. The plans went awry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Okay, hold on. Hold on. While we're talking about this, we'll just I'll skip ahead to some questions. We're see, this is what I mean. This is casual because we're completely going other ways, and I love it. But a couple people were asking about um, this was one of the writing questions was about um like who's coming next and if we'll see things. So I thought I would just put mm-hmm. this out there. If you want to share that or not. Yep. All this is definitely getting a book. I've started sure. writing it. <laughs> but in the, where it sits in the timeline, there'll be a couple before it. Okay. So next will be Leary, which is Law's yeah. twin and Cat, who we've seen uh-huh. and heard about since the second book. But <laughs> uh-huh. Uh-huh. Okay. <laughs> I'm finally so getting his book. I'm I'm really excited to write their book. Um, I I have started it as well, but I haven't like sat down and properly got into it yet. But okay. that'll be next. Um, so yeah, there'll be Cat and Leary, and then after that will be two characters who. So we there's a weird met. backstory to this. Are either of you in the? You're you're in my Facebook group, aren't you? Yeah. So, like maybe a year and a half ago if not longer maybe yeah a year and a half ago some there was a post in the facebook group about um what some of the characters would be like if they visited an adult store and there was i, I am going somewhere with, with this yeah, so far. Going. 
someone commented saying Eden would stick giant purple dildos everywhere he went. And from that, I wrote like this tiny mini short story about this random raider coming across a big purple dildo in a roller rink. <laughs> and <laughs> just stuck to the middle of the rink. And <laughs> that that character has evolved now into getting his own book. <laughs> I love it. Which will be, oh God. yeah, so <laughs> that'll be after Cat and Leary. But um, yeah, he, he kind when, of just- Win 100% become... knows where the adult stores are. Okay. I yeah. don't believe for a second that with it, that he can't smoke into one of those and hasn't brought back some presents. I will believe nothing, nothing else. <laughs> he does. Well, the, there's a bonus short where he does exactly that. What? Oh my God. I have to find that. See, I have to do some deep dive. I haven't read all the shorts because a lot of times like shorts just make me like crave covet. Yeah. They just make me covetous for more. So (laughs) I have read a few. Like I read the, uh, the, 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 who dressed up as a fairy? Who's the fairy princess that gets rescued? I can't remember. Um, is it Charlie and. Oh, Charlie and Moth do elf. Do yes, the elf elf. Play. Yeah. Elf. I read that one when I was at Starbucks and I was snorting. <laughs> but I, I tend to stay away, but I need to deep dive into these, I think, because I need to. <laughs> well, they're, they're all coming out um, in a book right. soon. Yes, yeah. Lexi. Beautiful. We're excited. Beautifully. Okay. With a, um, with a new... Sorry, go on. Nope, I'm just commenting on this with a new story in there too. Is that what you said? There's a there'll be a new novella packaged in with um, all the short stories. Yeah, love for it. two new characters. <laughs> I love so it. there's that as well. I love it so much. It makes me so happy. Um, oh. Yeah, we can ask this. I don't know if you're taking time. We'll throw it in there, Medora. We went off the track. It does not matter. The questions are just to keep us talking. So they just want to know um, if you know what an end game is or do you know how many books there will be or do you just keep letting everything two new characters pop up? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's, I, I, I have no idea how many books there end up being, but I do have a planned kind of conclusion for the main group that we've okay. had so far. Okay. Um, which you're starting to see, you kind of started to see at the, mm-hmm. at the end of Seraph, mm-hmm. and then hints um, in law as well. Okay. So we're getting to kind of an end goal for them, but I have ideas for a lot of other characters as well. One everyone asks about is Samson from the Herald's Cult. The kid who helps rig yeah. escape. Yeah. Um, I do have plans for him as well. Okay. He'll be getting a book. Yeah. <laughs> Yay. I love it all. You'll you'll have to have a like this will be like season one. It'll yeah. be like manga. <laughs> this will be like season one. I'm so excited. A conclusion in there. Yeah. There, there's also in I don't want to say too much in case people haven't read it. A, a yeah. character in law that they me who is very big and lives deep underground i'm trying not to ruin it oh yes yeah (laughs) i have ideas for him as well wonderful this is all very exciting i love it i love it well there you go there you go those those are the answers for you there are there are so many books she doesn't know the total yet so there we go yeah. All right. Okay. I'm going to, I'm going to rein us back just a little bit more. Of course, this was wonderful. Let me see. Let's see. We've kind of went over some of these. Oh, here's, this is a good one too. So we didn't really touch on this. I love asking, asking authors this. I know that it can be different for each thing for, I mean, it's sounding just from how we're talking that characters can kind of run away with themselves mm-hmm. for you and do that. But, um, you know, maybe maybe there's a difference between like your folk series and your and your monster series. Like, what comes first for you, the plot or the characters, mm-hmm. or which, and how is it different for your series and your? I mean, we haven't talked about it, but the uh, your dark, um, the dark uh, uh, book too. 
Thanks. That's that's really cool. Thank you. Yeah. That one too. That is, I will say, the only book of yours I had to bow out of. I was like, we have reached the trigger fulfillment for Jennifer, and she will be getting off the elevator <laughs> at this floor. But uh, I know many people loved it, but I, I'm not too big for my booktuber boots to be like, I'm going to hop off this train. <laughs> Will is a big horror film fan. so like, I know. And I am not. I am not, even though I love the Monsters <laughs> books. But anyway, so um, among the books you read, like, what's come first in, e in them for you? I would say they're definitely character led. Um, and yeah, lore is a good example of characters kind of getting away from you a bit as you're writing them and what wanting to flesh them out a lot as well so they feel whole um which is i think what happened with law is there was a i didn't want them to kind of if if it had been a novella which is what i had planned i don't think you would have had time to even really get to like them very much or get to like them together as a couple um so I would say definitely characters tend to come first and but for the monstrous series there's kind of like a big overreaching plot and storyline sure mm -hmm. uh, and then the characters just more books keep popping in. up in the way is what's happening right yeah and the, yeah, the problem is, is I'll make a side character, which I think, you know, I think most authors do. You make a side character and then either the readers really like them or you, you end up making them too much of a, <laughs> you think about them too much. And you're like, now I want them to have a story. That's yeah. what happens a lot. Yeah. Yeah. But for um, the folk series, that's probably 50, 50. Cause I, I know I knew what was going to happen when I started writing the first one. Like I knew how the trilogy would end. Okay. Um, I would say Lonan probably was more of the character I had in my mind when I started writing it. Okay. Um, but overall, definitely the, it's the characters who are the most important things to me. I think when I'm writing, I want them to feel real, which even though they're monsters, <laughs> a lot of them obviously can't ever be. <laughs> yeah. But, um, yeah, it's, yeah, making them seem like real people. Like the whole point of Wynn is that, you know, when you meet him, you think he's this big, terrifying monster who hates all people, which he kind of does, but, you know, <laughs> just like this evil thing that has no emotion and no feeling and then, the further the series goes, you, you see him through the eyes of everyone around him and it's completely different depending on who's interacting with him. I think that's that's yeah. what's fun about getting to write a series as well that's interconnected because you can keep growing the characters and mm -hmm. he's evolved from... He's still essentially the same, but he's evolved from how Danny first, you know, perceives him yeah, to how... Eden perceives him and then how right. he's perceived by the Raiders when they witness him, you know, with a person he loves very much and with his best friend. So it changes. That's what's fun for, for me. Sorry, yeah. bit off, got a bit off the question. <laughs> no, I love it. I love it because he's not a lone wolf anymore. Yeah. And I mean, yeah. No, I love that. I love that. Um, is the third folk book is the next one you're gonna finish, right? That it, or that's planned to be finished soon, correct? Yeah, but I have kind of got distracted by okay. <laughs> another book. <laughs> <Sure. But laughs> yeah, third folk book will be out before the summer. Okay. My plan was for that to be next and then the MF monster romance which is set in a new universe that I've that I've been writing but that's the one that's kind of taken over at the moment because oh, good. it's really fun and it's it's monster romance but it's like a contemporary setting oh, cool. um, and the yeah. character I just like I'm I, I love the monster character I've made up for it so I just can't stop writing that one at the moment so I think that'll probably be what I get out next I love it 
I'm really, really looking forward to you doing MF. I love when authors can do both and have it interchanged. And um, I'm so excited for I love all monsters. So I'm yeah, <laughs> but I'm also like just starting uh, Mortal Skin. I'm like 30 percent into it. So I guess I didn't just start it, but I had been waiting a little bit because I was like, I need all of them so I can read them all. But I was like, you can't always get what you want. So you better start reading <laughs> Well, this, the second is is happy for now, yeah. so there's no yeah. horrible. That's waiting. what Daniela told me. Daniela is the one really pushing me to get to this one because she loves Forgotten Vows, loves it. So I was like, okay, if you tell me there's a happy for now, I'll get started. <laughs> <laughs> and I love that the MF monster romance is everything. I'm very yes. excited. <laughs> oh, I'm so excited. I know from your from your blog that you I mean I'm not I'm I'm a woman that's not fond of a hard deadline either and mm -hmm. like I'm personally trying to dial in my routine so like one of my favorite questions to ask always is like what's your writing process like and so I know you know that you're like yeah. led by what your mood is what's mm -hmm. like fun how does it all like come together what's like a day of that's writing true. like for you yeah. That's I'm always interested in that, so I can like glean some sort of tips because it seems like we're wired the same way <laughs> in terms of that. Um, yeah, it's definitely led by my mood. So the like the the folk series is kind of it's it's quite heavy, isn't it? It's mm -hmm. yeah, very emotional, and so if I'm, I think if I'm feeling super sad I want to write like when I wrote Seraph I think I must have been feeling a certain way to be like I'm gonna punish these characters <laughs> by wow. making this book sad but um so yeah at the moment I I just really feel like writing something kind of fun like this the MF monster romance is it's like it's letting me be a kind of more like how I write the short stories for the monster series which aren't as serious and they're kind right. of more jokey and not as heavy. And this is letting me like make up all kinds of stupid TV shows that they watch because of the monster element and stuff, which is just what I find really fun. Um, but yeah, so typical work writing day, I I kind of, I tend to hyper fixate. So once I start, like Death's Bloom um, was meant to only be about 60 70 thousand words but because once I start writing it I kind of I do just fixate and I don't want to do anything else so I'll just sit there <laughs> and my husband has to come and get me be like can you just go and eat and take a shower <laughs> but yeah love that love that because do you have is is writing what you get to do full-time or you have a uh, I hate calling it a normal career or anything like that, but do you have an, <laughs> another job as well? Or yeah. Or the right full time? I have a, yeah, I have a day job as well. So it's, it's kind of writing in the evenings at the weekends and then mm -hmm. day job <laughs> during the week. So yeah. yeah. Inspiring for me. <laughs> oh, yeah. but, it can, but it can get done. Cause I'm not a person that likes deadlines either. And I'm very passion led. So to hear that, you're still like writing when you're passionate about a project and that they're getting done. I love yeah. that. I love hearing that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you you do definitely have to push yourself. Like that, but that that's kind of why I tend to not give firm release dates for stuff too early because I I'd rather I'd rather not break a promise to people who are expecting something. Right. Um, and I think, yeah, I, I'm a bit less structured than some other authors, I think, that can kind of sit down and get a, get a project finished. I do jump between them a lot um, mm -hmm. until I kind of get in that fixated mode and then I'll just focus on that and nothing else. But it yeah. is, it's definitely tough kind of in the evenings sometimes kind of, when you finish work and then you have to make dinner and walk the dog and do all that stuff and then sit down and make yourself right but once once you do it then you kind of you're there and you're doing it aren't you yeah yeah 
Well, and I, I know as like a reader who we have so many wonderful choices to read. I almost like it when an author, okay, the book is done. It's going to be out in um, three weeks. You'll have it in three weeks. There, yeah. there, there's something fun about that. of being like, oh, it's done. Okay, yay. She's yeah. going to promote it for like a month or two. And then like, we'll have it in our hands. And instead of that release date, that's six months out and then keeps getting pushed and keeps getting pushed, you know. Tiff and I, we have authors, we've been waiting two years for a book that was only two months away because an author's mood changed. Like, like you said, they yeah. they haven't been in the mood to write that, that finale to a series that they want to do. Right. And so they've had to cancel it like four times where it's like, just don't tell me it's coming until yeah. it's done because <laughs> then I don't have to keep my hopes up. So, you know, whatever helps you be most productive and helps you you know, like we're definitely happy with what you're putting out. Yeah, I want you writing when you're passionate, when you're like, because I'm yeah. like that, I'm a deep worker. If I'm yeah. not interested in it, it gets pushed and I yeah. have to like, yeah. and it's a non-conventional way of working because we're so like productivity led and deadline led. And so like, I, I'm i I'm loving how you're doing it because we yeah. know when it's coming and it when it's done, right pretty fast. Yeah. I think also once we saw how big lore was, we we're like, oh, wow. James, we got through this. <laughs> Yeah, that someone had commented so page back like you mean the six hundred page lore novel? <laughs> so you know it happens. It happens for sure. I love that. Okay, so this is kind of a side turn, but I love asking this question because I always think that it's sweet. Would you tell us just a little bit of your real life love story with us? Um, since you have a husband, tell us a little bit. Uh, okay. How you met? how you got together if you want of course <laughs> uh yeah we've been together um 12 years i think we met when i was in my second year of uni um and we've been married for i should know straight away i think <laughs> almost six years um i don't know he's just yeah he's my favorite person in the world. <laughs> I love him very much. And he's, he's so supportive as well. And he just, I, I think he believes in me more than I do. And he's more proud of me than I am myself. <laughs> yeah. I'm just like, Oh yeah, this, this book's doing really well. And he's, <laughs> he, he'll get <laughs> super happy for me, but yeah, he's, he's my favorite person. Does he read your monster romance? Has he found that he's uh, inspired any certain aspects of things or how does that? <laughs> no, he, he doesn't read fiction. He's not a fiction reader. Mm, wow. Well, okay. Yeah. I got to give him a little bit of a side eye for that, but okay. <laughs> you know, he knows the stories that I tell him. So okay. oh, yeah. it's just like, oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> whatever, <laughs> whatever you're into. <laughs> 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 that's brilliant I mean that might be a positive that he doesn't yeah. read them at all could be a good could be a good thing I think I think some authors wish their significant others didn't read them. <laughs> <laughs> oh that's awesome okay well that's fun I always love asking that question um do you have any other plans for some other subgenres of romance besides what you already have planned? Or are there ones you want to try? Um, I have I, an idea for what well, I guess is probably more a typical, like, is it high fantasy? Like orcs, elves? Yeah. Mm -hmm. All that kind of stuff. But, but like kind of a funny version. Oh, but yeah. I mean, that would be high fantasy when you have the... <clears throat> yeah. It would be a completely new world with them or, like, our world with them. Completely new world. Yeah. 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 But, yeah, so I have ideas for that. But um, the, the MF one I'm writing now, I, I'm obviously already, like, oh, I know who the second book's going to be about. <laughs> <laughs> so that that... Hopefully, if you know, if people enjoy it, that will be a new universe. Like that, it's a completely, totally separate to monstrous. It's um, like a completely different universe and timeline and stuff. But um, it's really fun 
to write about so I hope people like it <laughs> but yeah there's there's so many things I want to write about I'd love to write pirates pirate romance. Oh. yeah but it's oh, like man. but then well, like when I'm thinking about it, I'm like but can I put a monster in it to make it yes, more interesting can. like you love tentacles <laughs> you can and you can write it you absolutely <laughs> can I mean pirates of the Caribbean Davy Jones he's the monster yeah. <laughs> You could put them in wherever you want. That'd be amazing. Stacy Reed also said she's going to write us a pirate. So I love that. I love I'm just, yeah, I want all the authors to write me pirates. Please. And whatever. So I love pirate pirates. stuff. Have you watched the, the show Black Sails? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. So I mean, do you even have like some, I believe that's like gay pirates in there too, right? Yeah. There's, there's gay pirates in there. Yeah. Uh, where was I gonna say? <laughs> yeah, like Stacy Reed's from Jamaica, and when she just was visiting, she's like, oh, I need her. I've never even looked into my own history of Jamaica. And like, I was like, that fits pirates perfectly. So it does. Why aren't you right? She's like, it is. Like, she, I was like, that's literally where the pirates like originated from. <laughs> we want it. We want it. Oh, looks. So come on, computer. People got this. Would you ever write more um, horror stuff like Death Flash? I mean, I bet she'll say yes, Lexi. Yeah, definitely. That it, I, that was so fun to write. I mean, I know it's not a particularly fun, you know, upbeat <laughs> book, but um, yeah, I I liked doing the horror. I I didn't think it was that when I was writing. It, I was like, this isn't scary enough. And I know I don't know. If, I think some people think it is and others probably it's yeah. more just a bit creepy more than like jump scares outright horror right. but it was really fun to try and work in all creepy little things happening and also I mean there's still a monster in it <laughs> yeah definitely it was kind of more of a more of a creepy unsettling monster I think than all the others I've written yeah, I really want to check out some of the other ones that were in that collaboration. I had them mm -hmm. on a list and then I just didn't get around to it. But I loved some of the stories that they were doing. Like there was a phantom of the Yeah, they were retellings, yeah. Yeah, and some really good ones in there. I'll have to come back around to that. Ooh, oh, Ashton says Merman. Merman with pirates. That works. Merman. Mm -hmm. yeah. What I it's always women who are sirens, of course, but what if there was like a male siren or a gay pirate? I'm here. Then, right? And then it would be, oh, just like the lore behind that. That would be so. I mean, cool. I don't know if I've seen like male sirens before. Oh my God. I'm sure someone's done it. I'm I'm sure someone's done it. But oh I'm just saying, I give you that idea <laughs> free of charge. And it's great. Possible like <laughs> captor captive situation too. We have pirates. Oh, I just, I would love that. I mean, that's pretty cool there. Anyway. I was pretty scared, though. <laughs> I mean, I was, too. That's why I was like, I was like, I can't watch. I can't watch. I, can't. I'm I need to go back to my happy mind. I like atmospheric horror elements. Like, just, like, reading it as a genre, just slowly getting into that. So, atmosphere. Yeah. Scrap. I mean, <laughs> if I'm still promised an HEA, I can try a lot of things. You know? Like, I can. I can try a lot of things. It also was just during the winter times my mental health is a little more fragile than when i'm like i will take on anything sometimes <laughs> of year so in the winter i'm a little more like i need more comforting things but so oh, yeah it sneaks up on you yeah but i mean i love it and i mean especially when i trust an author which that's me saying i definitely trust your writing like it's easier to go mm -hmm. that stuff but um let me see oh yeah this one was a question put in by a viewer too that i realized is um one of the ones you have coming up i think is where they were going with this of which one you're really excited for people to read i mean i'm sure it's all of them but mm -hmm. <laughs> people want to know the ones they can anticipate the most so i think it's it's gonna have to be all if because You've already met his human and their first interactions are really funny. 
Um, <laughs> and he, he'll just be so fun to write because, I mean, uh, like the rest of the series, it'll be probably be mostly from the human's perspective, but okay. a human okay. being around all this for the entire book is going to be amazing to write. It's just going to be fun. So I think that that one is, yeah, the one I'm most excited for for everyone to get to. Because I think that's one a lot of people are looking forward to as well, all this story. He's like a, he's he's got like cult fan status now. And he was in, he was in a novella for like half a chapter. <laughs> yeah. So I'm not sure what's happened there. <laughs> but I yeah. mean, people, people catch their hearts. <gasps> oh my, sorry. Ashton's bringing us the good stuff. Google tells me that male sirens are called tritons. Just say, oh, oh, I am intrigued. I There's am. There's probably some good stuff about that. I okay, just, and then anatomy lad. I mean, Triton. I'm getting inspired. This is great. I mean, <laughs> a siren definitely has a hot pocket as well. Like, I mean, he definitely I mean, does. A Triton three gen with one yeah. prominent. I can sketch them out. <laughs> I love it. I can't <laughs> before Luke comes up with. He's got so much sass. Yes, I love the sass. He does. That's the thing. Like you, and that's why I love how you just have fun <laughs> with your bonus content and chapters because they do side mm -hmm. characters jump off the page, and I want it all. I want everything. I want everything. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They they are the bonus shorts and stuff are so fun to write because they're not like they're not part of the storyline so I can just kind of make them make the characters do whatever I want which ends up being Charlie and Moth just being idiots <laughs> no that it's so good it's so good I mean yeah it's so great well it's also because like there's endless amounts of things that Wynn will want to do for Danny. And yeah. I just love reading those things where like Danny will make a comment and Wynn's like, I must do this for my precious. <laughs> I must do this for him. <laughs> and I just love that. I love that so much. Have you, this is just a random question from me and you, this is just super random. Have you ever thought of like, of like a triad in one, in one of your monstrous? I don't know. That just is coming to my mind of like, a human and two monsters or something. I don't know. Just wondering if like Polly has ever come across your thoughts for any of your books. Totally fine if it didn't, but it just like came in my <laughs> No, yeah, it um it has. I've got plans for kind of like a spin-off. Yes, look at me. Oh, shit. <laughs> yeah. That will be Polly relationships um yeah. included, yeah. Oh, um, I love that. I don't know I how much to say you know the guy in law that I mentioned earlier, who they meet, who came up from underground. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he he'll be he'll be in a poly relationship. Yeah, I love that. <gasps> I I literally think of it just because like there's so much love in your books, and whenever there's like that level of like acceptance and love, I'm like, sometime two people's just not gonna be enough, and we're gonna need more. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so yeah, that's um awesome. yeah he'll he'll kick off kind of the spin-off that will be oh. more than just mm couples there'll be a mix i like that so much when when bows out though if a squirrel is involved <laughs> <laughs> i love that that's so much fun okay um everyone who's listening you can throw in some more questions i know people have already i just have um like two left of my pre ones and then tip if you have others we haven't got to yet as well um but i just want to ask i know we've been talking about this but what do you think it is that draws people to monster romance for yourself of course but then you know what do you mm -hmm. think it is about it i mean i have my own theories but what is it for you mm, for me i think it's a lot to do with kind of maybe characters or people or monsters who are can easily not be accepted by people and then they find their person or people who accept them exactly as they are I think that's a big draw for me and I think that that probably is for a lot of readers as well like 
it's fun to make them, you know, look super weird or interesting and have weird junk. Like those are obviously very important parts of monster <laughs> romance. But I think the the core of it is kind of it might sound a bit corny, but like everyone deserves to be loved and to find the person or people who love them and monster romance is kind of like the epitome of that, isn't it? Because it's I mean the word monster means something that people are scared of or looks hideous or that kind of thing. That's what I think is a big draw to it. That's what I love. Yeah. I I love how you can, especially like with Sarah, like everyone has a backstory. Everybody is accepted and loved. And I always love how you put them in these like very harsh backdrops, these like survival high stake backdrops. Mm -hmm. I was wondering, Jen will probably be back, she's probably making her way back on, but I was wondering, does like your settings, like how do you, how did you come up with that? Does that come from your love of horror or is it important for you to have like high stakes around them? Because one of the things that I love is that it's never really internal conflict. It's always external around them. Yeah. Really yeah, that's a big thing for me. I, I, I like the angst to kind of, yeah, exactly as you said, be external, be the situations they face, but it doesn't kind of tear them apart. It brings them closer together. Yeah. Um, so they face it together. Like I think Charlie and Moth are probably, which I know Char Moth and Charlie are like probably the top <laughs> favourites for a lot of people. And I think that's because that it that's a huge part of their story, isn't it? It's that they've got all this stuff going on around them and they kind of dislike each other at first, or at least Moth dislikes Charlie <laughs> a lot, but it does bring them together. And yeah, that's... <laughs> I like that about Moth too, because he kind of, what I loved about Moth's character, because I mean, they're transferable themes here, that he's like monster, kind of human, he's not accepted, he doesn't have a space anywhere, and mm -hmm. he ostracizes himself because of that, and then he finds love, like, I just love that. That's like the character that's like the, the epitome of what you're talking about, that I yeah. love so much. Yeah, definitely. I think that's why people kind of relate and love Moth so much as well because he's very much doesn't fit in either world and he kind of punishes himself for that and he needs someone else to show him that it's not a bad thing which I think a lot of people can relate to as well in, in whatever way in a million different ways but I think a lot of people can relate to that all his insecurities are gorgeous like when you're describing him, I'm like, he just sounds so hot. Like, what? I would love him. Gorgeous. Oh, I'm like, does that mean I'm gorgeous? I'm gorgeous too. Though. Because Moth is just like, oh, I love, I loved. He is precious. Yeah, precious baby. A little prickly thing. Oh, I love it. See, Rochelle, this is what I'm saying. This is what I'm saying. Hunter, why do people give Hunter such a hard time? Okay, I love him. Yeah, I, and Hunter yeah. are our favorite. That is our favorite book, okay? We were saying this before we went live. I was like, that's why Eden is on his little pedestal over here because <laughs> he is just, he's a good time friend, okay? He's a good time friend. And I just love that with Hunter. He's like, you're so cute. You, you're just so cute. You're so grumpy. Let me help you. <laughs> This big purple ball of sunshine that just softens yeah. Hunter. And yeah. I love and Whenever Hunter. he gets too sassy, he's just like, I'm going to spank you later. And Hunter's just like, <laughs> I love it. I love that. And Jen brought this up. Hunter gets to feel like he is handled in the bedroom. He feels dainty for once. He can be, mm -hmm. I love that. Okay. I love, I so love that about their relationship. At all. Yep. Yeah. Well, he, he says it. He's like, I always have to be in charge. I don't want to be in charge. Yeah. All the time. <laughs> because I'm big. I have to always be. I always have to be in charge. God, and Eden's like, I got this. Oh, see, here we go. I'm living it. I love how Hunter is enormous, but he just wants. I know. Right? I know. I love it. I love it. 
Michael Silner. Oh, they're talking about the audiobook again. The audiobook. So oh, yeah. What's it been like working with Podium? This is so exciting. <laughs> yeah, amazing. They're, they're, yeah, they're super prompt and professional. And uh, like, it was amazing that they said Michael would be able to do the series because, you know, he's he's just so good. And I think everyone, if you've listened to the audiobook now, you can hear how like it I when when I when I started working some, with them I was like how are they gonna do how are they gonna do Wynn's voice <laughs> like I warned them I was like I did kind of describe his voice as you know being like screaming <laughs> souls or whatever um but he's done such an amazing job like it's it's perfect and Danny's Louisiana accent as well is amazing and oh, you hear God. you hear Eden in it if you do listen to it Jen eventually me too okay. I mean I will I will I will I the oh. thing is is that when it had came out on audio I had just reread it because I annotated a copy of it and then I was like oh I just reread it I have to wait because I have too many books but I save books like that for when I have a bad day like I have my audio of Heartless saved because when I have a really bad mental health day I'm like I'm just gonna curl up with my favorite people and win is one of those <laughs> so I, cannot wait. I definitely do because i was like oh, i need to hear eden I need to hear it. and there is at the end of it there's a sample from eden as well so you hear charlie and hunter like, <laughs> charlie's <worse. laughs> oh, I charlie's an accent too. Is, like, is so good i cannot wait and i cannot that's wait part of the thing too like Hunter Hunter is also just my type, just as what a human type is, because I love a grumpy soldier anyway. And so he's just my type, no matter what. I just love it. Yeah. So and he's a size but. queen like me. I just love how like <laughs> he's big enough to take him on. Oh. Uh-huh. <laughs> it's great. It's great. All right. Um, and then um the here is my last question. Sorry, before I froze, I forgot where I was at. Um, just want to know if there's any events you're going to um, or if you have anything planned in the UK or if anything's going on for you. Mm, nope. All right. <laughs> no, <laughs> no book signings that I'm planning that, I mean, that might change, but yeah, yeah. at the moment, um, nope. That's okay. That's okay. Just like to let the people know. Oh my gosh. They're loving you. Stop it. Stop hyping me. I cannot be derailed in my TBR. I'm so excited. Oh my God. <laughs> Maybe I'll buy it and I'll just have to skip to Eden. Ah! <laughs> oh my God. When and, is and that? When... Did they say when that one's coming? Eden's out on the 7th of March. <laughs> what? <laughs> Lily! <laughs> Come on. That is during the next Romance Takeover Readathon. So, you know, maybe I'll have to do that. Yes. Um, I'm so excited. I will do my best to drag Lily to a signing. You are on that, C. Rochelle. Um, <laughs> we will leave that up to you. Get that to happen. I love it. Okay. So, Tiffany, did you have any questions we didn't get to on my well, list here? One thing I asked before you popped back on was just about oh. the backdrops. Like, I know that you're a big horror fan so I was wondering if that went into the mm -hmm. atmosphere that you create you know I um I love that about you that you like horror films <laughs> it definitely plays into when I'm thinking of new monsters like more the the gross monsters that try and kill them and they have to fight yeah yeah I like thinking of those they're fun my husband came up with one in Seraph though you know the little like creepy bug things that yeah yeah <laughs> that was my husband I was like do you want to make up a monster and he, he kind of put all these parts together and they ended up being the one most people have said sound really gross and horrifying so yeah. I have to get him to do that again Well, because it's difficult to fight when they're like you know like a, a rodent type monster or something mm -hmm. and they just can swarm you mm -hmm. That. It was hard as well writing Ser writing Seraph because Lilac's meant to be like, you know, really good at killing anything. Yeah. <laughs> so I feel like as well in that, like coming up with monsters that would kind of give him a bit of a challenge. Yeah. Yeah. They they definitely did. They were good ones. Lilac is so cool. And surgical with it. So, I, so love cool. I love a lethal. I love a lethal. 
It's very true. I didn't know much what I like thought of him before we got to this book. Like he was mm-hmm. someone that I didn't have a, you know, like where I was, I was really excited for Moth's book and to find out about, you know, and you're very excited for, to find out what's happening to Gloam, you know, like when you get to their book, because you see, and with Lilac, I was like, I don't know what to think of him. Mm-hmm. Um, and he was just so cool. I loved him. Oh, wow. <laughs> I loved him. But yeah. Well, did anyone have um, any other questions to pop in? Um, otherwise, we'll give people a minute to type in here. But this is just so fun. I mean, I could gush about monsters all day. So um, Ooh. let me see. What are some, we should give some other like monster recommendations that we've read what are some good ones to throw out i mean i always throw out the spider's mate because he's the he's still the weirdest monster that i've read he's still Uh the he's still the the most like like a true monster yeah Yeah. like how does someone want to bang that and by the time they do it i love him so much that i'm like he can get it (laughs) but that's a that's a sign of such good writing isn't it that you fall in love with him even though he's mm-hmm. something you might be terrified of in you know the real yep. life version <laughs> that exists yep. yep and the uh the naga series too i mean that was an interesting time in my life reading spider and snake monsters and just <laughs> they're still i still love the nagas because a lot of times what what I feel like that I love about monster romance is that they end up being very gentle and sweet Mm -hmm. with their mate. Right. And so even though they're a horrifying to look at, we're like, Oh, but they're just, you know, they're so gooey for the person. And the Nagas are like, I'm a dominant. They're (laughs) They're very alpha. And I was like, Oh, I like this. I like them to do that sometimes. Slithering up trying to nest, like just like, (laughs) <laughs> yeah, it's like I'm going to impregnate you now. <laughs> right now. <laughs> Love that stuff. Okay, we did get a couple questions. Are there any other horror romance authors or books that you've enjoyed? I love the mix of genres, but it's not super common. With horror romance, yeah, that's true. Yeah, it's not it's not um a genre I read that much. So I can't think of any off the top of my head, but the the series that Death's Bloom is a part of, mm-hmm. which is Monsters and Mayhem, um, yeah, I'd encourage everyone to go read those because it was really fun working with all the other authors and it's yeah. such a cool mix of retellings as well. That I, I like, I firmly believe there's something for everyone in there if you if you're open to horror, you know, horror romance. Yeah, because yeah. they did like. Dracula and Frankenstein and Phantom of the Opera and Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, like mm-hmm. all all those like darker horror in there. Yeah. Definitely cool. Um, will win be an audio as well? I think you said yes, right? Yes. Yep, it will be, yeah. Yeah. Which will be fun. That's incredible. <laughs> I'm so excited. A whole book of his voice. <laughs> I need to get my copy of that. I don't have that physical one. I need to get that one. Um, Oh, yeah. Lizelle had asked this earlier, too, and I missed it. Um, Would you write contemporary romance over that's not monster related? Uh, I I mean, I definitely wouldn't rule it out, but I prefer writing monster romance. (laughs) But, I mean, like, if I get an idea for something, then... Yeah, for sure. I wouldn't. I wouldn't not write it just because it's not paranormal or or monster. Nice. You just need the right story to hit you. Yeah. I love all the artwork you post or commission. And can we say amen to that? Yes, amen. We agree. <laughs> Is there any thought to doing like a companion picture book type of thing? <laughs> Characters, creatures, and monster, um, monster world plants at some point. That's interesting, Lexi. That'd be great because your website does have the whole basically cool. like map and description of each area, like with mm-hmm. location. What's that called? Uh, 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 what's it called when someone does that? Like a uh, index? Yeah, yeah, like a monster index. Mm-hmm. That'd be yeah, cool. I've got that on the website, but yeah, not not um, 
that's that is a really good idea but that would be so much work yeah. <laughs> I'd have to get kind of far ahead right. with writing mm -hmm. well, it could be something to look into when the series is over because that would give right. me kind of a bit more leeway to spend some time on it but yeah yeah there, there's there's so much amazing artwork like fan art and the stuff I've commissioned as well have, out there like it, have, it's sorry go on no I'm sorry is there anything in the works for any special editions of any of them that would have art in them or have have you been approached to do that or thought of that at all of you know sometimes getting a special edition that would have art in it or something um, well, I'm doing a book box with Renegade Romance later this year. Yes. That's right. Yeah. Okay. I knew, I'm, I knew that. <laughs> I have that. <laughs> that is one subscription I will never give up. <laughs> I actually have my Regine Abel right now, and I'm like, oh, I want to read these. Things. Oh. <laughs> like, look at this. <laughs> look at this. Anyway, sorry. Um, and they're doing two of your books for that? or uh i don't know what i can say and what okay. i can't so i'll say nothing That's okay. <laughs> we'll wait we'll wait i hope it's soon i can't wait for that one when i saw you on her list i was like yes i am so <laughs> um well that'll be cool to see with that but yeah i oh i love i love naughty art i have a whole book of it so i'm very excited about that um oh i wrote that down oh, yeah Run Definitely line. Beatrix Hollow, yeah. Yeah, if you like creepy hot vibes, love it. Oh, Orlis voice. Oh, because that'll be oh. Bella. That'll be in the mm -hmm. yeah, I will. We'll be interested to see what how Michael does that. Sacred Springs audio. What does that mean? Uh, it's oh, it's oh when they're there. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yep. I just had to <laughs> I had to read it out loud. <laughs> Any chance of high fantasy style front of the book? Map of the Monster World. Oh, oh, oh map yeah. of the front. I like that. That would be cool. Yeah, I don't know how you'd find someone. How you? Uh, it's, I'd have to get advice on how to commission a map artist yes. for that. But there may be some people that I could suggest to you because I know some fantasy authors who are indie. They've had some maps commissioned. Mm -hmm. Um, so I'd have to look. Like Jess Wisecup has sub in hers so i'm sure there are people who do uh i love maps so that sounds exciting to me yeah, yeah. i think naomi lucas has a little map in the front of each of hers too because she has yes, the different yeah. like where their dens are at she has because each naga has their den or whatever and you already have everything like flushed out like all of the yeah yeah it would be cool to have that yeah <laughs> love that second Seconding Beatrix, love it, love it. Okay, I um, oh, I remember a question I was gonna ask too. Um, are there plans to show like any of like how some of the different like continents are doing during this time? Because we've mostly just been in the U.S. Mm -hmm. and that's happening. Are there any plans to show like you know like maybe some of the rifts open up to China or open up to uh, Australia or something? Or, yeah. or the UK, that'd be interesting. <laughs> yeah, well, I've I've got one of the for the like um, collection of short stories book that's coming out um, soon. I've written a few more extras for that, and one is obviously Orlith, and um, it's Orlith in the UK. So you'll see what happens <laughs> there. <laughs> no, <laughs> that's been fun coming up with like trying to think about what might have happened in London. Yeah. That was fun. yeah. Well, because we mostly stay in the wastes, mm -hmm. you know, areas, but we know like there's obviously people on the on the coast and stuff, right? Mm -hmm. That's where they are. So be some very interesting other areas of population too. So yeah. Um, That's gonna be fun. Watching them play with that little spark was hilarious to me and more. So I cannot wait. I can't wait to <laughs> get it bigger and bigger and yeah. be so obsessed with it. Like I can't wait. <laughs> <laughs> this is good. I did mean to ask more. I haven't asked too many questions about the folk just because 
it's selfish. I don't want to spoil anything for myself because I'm reading it right now. But mm -hmm. you had said for, you know, when I asked about whether story or character and you said you had a pretty good idea, at least of where the over are for this, the overarching mm -hmm. for this one. But what kind of inspired you to go this way to kind of break away from monstrous and start telling this story? Well, that was another what the prologue at the beginning of um, Mortal Skin. I'd had that written for ages <clears throat> and a few other scenes from that. And I think the main inspiration for actually sitting down and writing that was probably Lonan. <laughs> like I just wanted to write about him more than anyone else. Yeah. Um, and a few other things that I won't say because it will... It might spoil things for people who haven't read all of them, but I'm Lonin just starting to get a. I'm just starting to get a little taste of Lonin. I'm very yeah. much like, who are you? I'm <laughs> over there. <laughs> oh, he's he has black hair and he's silent and grumpy. He must be. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's <interesting>. what times. <laughs> right? Black hair, black times. <laughs> oh. Yeah, yeah, but here's the precious beam. There we go. I love it. I mean, I like I like Ash too. I can't imagine mm -hmm. what he I mean, at least what I've read up to now, like, you know, this the beginning of it of everything he loses in the beginning and then being like, You're coming to the Fey world and guess what? You don't have a choice. Mm -hmm. Come on. It's just it would be very overwhelming. So Yeah. Very much feel for him a lot. So. Yeah, I feel like Ash is probably a character similar to Hunter in that you either really like him and relate to him or you don't like him at all. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, but he's so, his world is just completely ruined. So I was just like, what would you do? Like, sure, he's being stubborn about it, but like, why wouldn't you? I'd be like, oh, yeah. I don't owe you people anything. Like, I don't owe you people anything. <laughs> <laughs> and you want to use me for your little fey machinations, I just would be like, fuck you guys. <laughs> so I, w I would feel for him for sure. Oh, uh, I love this question, Stephanie. Is art in the monstrous box, I think. Mm, monstrous. I love it. I am excited. Yeah. Um, What's your name? Her name just went out of my head. April. She always commissions some really good art. Mm -hmm. for is. so yeah it's gonna be a good one she does <laughs> yeah she does great great work well I mean it always helps when someone's very passionate about monster romance about weird romance and so the really good artists who do it so mm. mm -hmm. but I mean again you've had some really good stuff commissioned over yes you years. have like I <laughs> So I have some very interesting things pop up on my Twitter from yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just like, oh my gosh, this is this is delightful. This is just what I want. Between fan fiction stuff and monstrous art that like pops up on my <laughs> Twitter. Thank you. Very much. <laughs> anyway. Well, Lily, thank you so much for joining us. This has been a great way to spend an afternoon for me. And thank you for sharing with us about your monsters. And we're so excited for everything you have coming up. Yes. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Yes. And thank you for everyone for joining and for asking your questions. And make sure that you're following Lily on, you know, Goodreads and on Instagram and her Facebook group. Lots mm -hmm. of Lots of fun stuff happens over there and yeah. there's good, good stuff happening in there. And that's usually when I find out when the next book is coming is usually from your Facebook group the most. So it's a good place to be, but yeah, well, everyone, thanks for joining and uh, have a wonderful rest of your day, wherever you are around the world. Bye. Thanks, everyone. <laughs>